he'd say, my office is always open. But it wasn't. <laughs> you know, one of those where like, oh, you can always come in there. And we're like, my, office, my door's always open. It's yeah. not. The moment you go in there, he's fuming. Yeah. He, 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 didn't, he didn't like it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch, Statman Dave and Chris Stark. They're both with me. As always, yeah. As always, my weird way to start. <laughs> Sometimes you do have to vary it. And I did there, and it didn't work. It's all good. <laughs> Dave, how are you? I'm all right. A little nervous with this, the whole fantasy football thing. Mm. Sort of the threat of what could happen. I'm, I'm a little worried, to be honest. Yeah, you actually came up with a great suggestion for yourself. So, <laughs> if Statman Dave finishes outside the top 100,000 on um, fantasy football, uh, we want a punishment... It's like beyond anything anyone's ever done, uh, a forfeit, we should say, actually. And you you, you consent to this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and you yourself suggested, perhaps, you know, in the Game of Thrones, you know Crouchy the shame bell. Yeah. And he, he, he walks through the streets naked and people just go and shame. Shame, shame, shame. Throwing, like, vegetables at I mean, him. he suggested that. <laughs> so uh, I think that's a great sort of benchmark. And then, obviously, thank you for everyone who's suggesting forfeits for Statman Dave. Uh, please keep them coming in. I've got a bit of Bango news, actually. Ooh. Bango, how is yeah, he? Yeah, I know everyone likes to keep tabs a little bit because, you know, he was... Um, uh, he was born in, in that sort of weird lockdown time that we had. And... Uh, yeah, my little baby. Um, his real name isn't Bango, but we joked about that on the podcast and then several news outlets actually just called him Bango. Yeah, like my um, little div rat. Like little div rat, yeah. He is now, he's just turned two, but he's just started Little Kickers. Oh. So he's just started the little football club thing that he does. Would you recommend that for div rat? Because he's not started that yet. I play football with him, but... Yeah, but then maybe you don't need a football. Uh, to be fair, if his dad's Peter Crouch, it's sort of like <laughs> I'd happily pay for my child to be coached <laughs> by you. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. Yeah, but I think it's nice to sort of like do it with other kids. So it comes to the end of the class, right? And they do a, um, they're all allowed a penalty kick. And obviously he's only two. He doesn't, you know, he's just giving it a go and all that. And uh, I was interested to see what happened. So he went up to the ball and every other child before has gone on and kicked it into the goal. First thing he's done is gone and, and picked it up yeah. and thrown it in the goal. Yeah. I'm really struggling with my little boy at the moment. Want to keep wanting to pick it up. Similar mm. thing. Um, but I've told him there's no no hands. You are can't, you, are you, you worried can't you've got a goalkeeper? Oh, no. I was going to say, lads, you've both got goalkeepers. Impossible. I think we might. Though. That's what happened. Wouldn't happen. If we are t seriously talking about footballers being... Mm a kind of, um, uh, you know, a nature versus nurture thing and nature being a massive part of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. you were always born to be a footballer. No, but I, I'm totally for this. I think, um, you know, you are what you are in life. That is that is um, a given. You know, like I think what I want my kids to express themselves any way they want to be. You know, it's the modern world. Like, that's where we are now. Unless they want to be a goalkeeper. Right. <laughs> Perhaps that was a bit too strong. I know what you mean, though. Uh, no, it's, it's, you not... don't mean that. What you just mean is... Um, no, he, he's kicking it now. I'm happy with that. Yeah. He's, uh, but he does have that tendency to pick the ball up and he keeps trying to bounce it and he's, he's got this thing where he bounces it and catches it and he, it's quite good. And I'm like, well done, son. You know, but now kick it. He's <laughs> even practising the bit before you kick it as a goalkeeper. Yeah, I think Like Neville Southall. Yeah. <laughs> Waste a little time. I think you're trying to repress it. Like, I think you're doing that classic parent <laughs> thing of you're going too far trying to make him outfield. Probably he's, ideally a he's striker. Doing that. It's what he wants to do with it, but... It, it's if you can coach them out of that, I think. But where's the like, when do the crunching tackles come in? You start celebrating, like, it yeah. should, if you want your child to be a good defender, should that be starting now as well? Because they're scoring goals. Yeah, no, I think, I think definitely an element to that. But I think um, the best thing to do at that age, like, is is be comfortable with the football. Um, you know, I, I, we talked about this before, like my dad got me into Corver and being at one with the football, like constantly have a ball with you. So, you know, you're always going to need your technique no matter what position you are in a football field. And like having the ball around you and manipulation of the ball and being able to be comfortable with the football is what all that matters at that age, I think. Do you know what's an extra little bonus? 19% of players in the Premier League are left-footed. One in five. So if you two lads adapt the games, try and make them left-footed, they're going to have a natural advantage. So I should tell You're Coach Ryan to focus on left-footed. I am, yeah. Yeah, left-footed. Yeah. 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 
even if you get to that point where they are naturally right footed and you've worked on the left foot at that point, they're still two footed, which makes them even better. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. The fun factor is so important at the young age. We should, um, wait, two things. We should maybe get you to stat the kids. Like, you know what I mean? Um, like, put, whack the little vest things on yeah. them and get, get some numbers that, involved. Like. To tears though, Chris. And, uh, like, uh, like you said, we should talk about fun. You know, <laughs> Please, can a, we sit? Stat man stat- Dave <laughs> down with a bunch of three-year-olds and four-year-olds and just do a whole session just on stat. Bring the, bring the stats in earlier. Mm, get them in earlier. Yeah, get them in earlier. I, I think there'd be a lot of bored kids, but later on in their life, Lives, it would click. Would you turn them off football? No, I think they <laughs> they they not really listen to what I'm saying, but it would go in. Okay, it's a sponge. We should definitely try and, and you should water down the stats so it works for four and five year olds. It should be like um, you know uh, blocks and colours and like three things. You, you've got to be more kid with the stats. You know, we should definitely look into that kid stats things. Mm. Like that's one thing. And then I guess the other thing is. Um, Divrat versus Bango. We should definitely have a kick around at some point, but via our kids. Mm. Just see what happens. Me and my son beat Crouchy in his own back garden and his son. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see it. Has <laughs> little Bango got a pair of shin pads yet? Oh, <laughs> he's got, oh here we go. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> what are we doing today? <laughs> So, Chris, today we are going to take a look inside the manager's office at the football club. We've never been there, but Crouchy's been there a few times. I certainly have. I, lo- I love this one. Like, it's so hard to go into a manager's office. Like, I remember, like, you know, my dad might say something like, you need to speak to the manager, like, he's treating like shit, or the, your agent will go like, well, yeah, you know, it's, it's better coming from you, or, and you think to yourself... I've got to go and see him. Like, I've got to. And that feeling is like, depends who the manager is, but you don't often go in a manager's office and if you go in that little knock, oh, God, like, I, you, I'll be in the uh, breakfast or whatever and, and I'll think, oh, just get it out in the, in the morning, just get it done. And loads of times I've had to do this. You know, like, telling, telling a manager you have to leave, for instance, you leave a club, you want to leave. You know, you're flying at a club and you, you want to leave. Or telling a manager why are you playing this fella in front of me? You know, or telling manager, what, what, like, do you want to, to keep me? Do I have to leave to, to play? Or, you know, little things. Or, you know, you might want pff, a, a day off on a Thursday. <laughs> you know, just anything. Like, there's so many factors and you think, I've got to go in and see him. And that, that those butterflies in your stomach before you go in, it's a it's, it's big, big Mate, deal. Mate, there's going to be so much to talk about, what? isn't there? Even down to, like, decoration. I was going to say the, the knock. Just go even going in. Is Crouch using a different knock for a day off to being transfer listed? Also, there's some managers I just can't imagine being in an office. Like, I associate that with bosses and head teachers. Like, mm. I understand the manager ha- has to do more, but I do kind of sometimes wonder, do they actually need an office? There's also a type of person, like a player, that to, to, like, go in and smash a door down. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I've never been sort of, like, one of those players. I know when I need to see him and I need to be forceful... Mm. But like, I'm not the type of player to bash it down and go like, how oh, f- fucking dare you not play me? You know, Guys, I mean? like, this is going to be good. I can tell there's loads to talk about. Through you, Crouchy, you can sort of take me, Dave, everyone listening to this, in like into the office. Because it's an area of football that we never see, mm. obviously. No, probably never will. I say probably, Dave. Um, probably never will. It's actually something that I have never thought about since I retired. And then now you, you've you mentioned it, I am going inside the manager's office so much in my head. Yeah. And, I, and then I'm, I've now remembered how anxious I was doing that. Uh, <laughs> and some of the things that come out of it have been quite funny. <laughs> Feels a little bit like PTSD, this country. <laughs> Tell you what, like, yeah. C- 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 some of the horrible moments. <laughs> Jesus. Great. Before we venture into the manager's office, though, we should discuss some of the ideas we've been working on uh, for Crouchfest. And I'm particularly enjoying everyone feeding into this process. So people have been getting in touch through the website. Website name again is... ThatPeterCrouchPodcast.com Thanks, Dave. (laughs) And people can go on there and submit ideas... Uh, Obviously, questions for the podcast, that kind of thing. But there's been so many good ideas, some terrible ideas as well, um, but all ideas for Crouch Fest, which is coming up at Wembley Arena at the end of this series. 
Like this message from Ben from Northampton. After the debate about Glenn Johnson versus Scott Mills, I'd like to see a live Mr. and Mrs. style game. Chris and Scott versus Crouchy and Glenn to test out whose friendship is genuine and prove whether Glenn hates or loves Crouchy. A bad forfeit for the loser is needed. Glenn's got in touch with me this week. You know. Has he actually? Yeah, he's reached, he, re- <laughs> he reached out and said, someone's just shown me some, saying something that I don't like you or something. And um, it's quite embarrassing, really. I had to sort of say, uh, do you? <laughs> it was all a bit awkward, really. Yeah. Yeah. I'm confident he does. You reckon? I think so. But will he be there at Crouch Fest? Well, this is something that will... We'll have to wait and see. What a weird big dick competition we're having here. <laughs> <laughs> Whose mate likes them more? Whose mate likes them more? Live at Wembley Arena. <laughs> Lads, I've always wanted to be the, the, the sort of a game show host. So right. if I can do the be the game host for yeah. that, it would be fantastic. <laughs> I think it all needs thinking through. But <laughs> uh, Thank you, Ben. It's a good idea. Right, Crouchy, let's get into it. Which manager had the most luxurious office? Do you know what this? Is? I think this was a case of time more than anything. Um, like you know, the training grounds were just getting better and better as it got later and later. And you wouldn't class like Stoke and Burnley to have the best strength, but it, the training grounds were amazing by then. And like Burnley's training ground and st- like Stoke's was was good. You know, like the managers' offices were nicer than when I first started out. I remember Graham Graham Ricks at Portsmouth. You know, we we were getting changed in port cabins. Basically, we were using the Navy base. HMS Collingwood. That's where we were training, and like on the boat. No, no, literally, like the 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 playing fields of the navy. Things obviously just got better and better. I mean, we were using a British gas playing fields when I was at QPR, so that that was where I started. And then Villa obviously brought in more heath. That was not, it was nice, but it wasn't an amazing manager's office. But then later on, obviously, the new training grounds get built. Okay, if we're starting with sort of luxurious management offices, which office are we going to first? I want to uh, I want to have a good look round. I want to know, like, who had the... What was that Billy Bass, Big Mouth, the fish on the wall, you know, that swings its head and talks to you? Like, who had one of them? Like, Do you know what... Um, Poolist, definitely. You know what, what What was amazing about a Big Mouth, office? Billy Bad Bass or something, wasn't it? Like, do you know the ones what I mean? Like, exactly what, it spins what they around, about, it's like, those? don't worry, be happy. <laughs> the ones, what, what are those? They're mad, them, aren't they? They like, used to be everywhere. Yeah. I swear, like, they the were the fish kind in of... The office. You'd have a fit. It was like a fake fish on the wall and it'd swing and it'd sing you uh, a song. Yeah, song, you know? yeah. No one had one of those, Chris. No, I'll be honest, they didn't. Do you know what? I put in Jurgen Klopp's office. Yeah, that was a good office. Like, nice balcony overlooking training. Okay, um, but is there, what's what's around the office? So is there, is it like shirts or is it, is it quite minimalist? No, or? no, it's very basic. You can see they've had absolutely nothing to do with the decoration. It's, <laughs> like, it's not as if there's family pictures there. It's not like an office like how you're imagining it. It's literally just like generic football pictures on the wall. And the, the biggest thing is what you always try and get a look at when you go into the manager's office is the um, tactics board. And you'll have, mm. like, names on the board. And you'll see it with these Amazon documentaries that you go inside, and, and, and these names are, like, it's, like, number one choice. Or, like, if you go in on a Friday and, you know, you've been sent into the manager's office on a Friday, for instance, and you get a look at the team for the Saturday... And you can obviously try and relay that back to the lads and like, you're fucked tomorrow. <laughs> oh, so it's like, it's like you're a spy. It's like you're well, in there you're gathering in there. intel. Gathering as much intel as you could possibly get. Yeah. You literally see the team and the subs on the side, um, you know, which is for him, he's, him and his coaches have been discussing. But off, quite often on a Friday, if you get pulled in, it was like the curly finger, he's called the curly finger. And if you're there, and like the coaches and the manager will be there. And you say you've played the last five games, if you get the curly, you know full well, you're probably getting... Well, give us one example. Who gave you the curly finger? Well, we used to have this thing like, Eddie nizwicki has got a... Um, He's been a goalkeeper for a long time. So he's got... His fingers are broken a lot. This, this one here sort of goes mm. this way. So instead of the curly fingers, it ended up being the curly knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Not proud of it. Not proud of it. It was quite funny though at the time. And if you got a curly knuckle on a Friday, you knew you were out. <laughs> Grouch, how does that conversation go? So the knuckles come. The thing is, you might as well not even, once you, as soon as you get the knuckle, 
<laughs> but the other lads would say that, the curly you know, nut. You've, yeah, oh, you've it, had the curly yeah. nut. Like if you're if you're sitting with your back to play and you're having a bit of lunch, or whatever, and someone's come in and gone, uh, grouchy, obviously like like wherever it was, <laughs> and you got the curly knuckle, you might as well not even go in there. You know full well that you're not playing on tomorrow. You might as well go off oh, for fuck's sake and just go home. <laughs> Well, I was just right on the board. But it's common courtesy to for a manager to say, look, you've done great for me, but I'm just going with the other option tomorrow. <laughs> um, and those conversations are difficult, but like I think like, you know, Eddie was a top such a top man and a great coach. And he was a bit of a full guy there, really, because the manager sent him out sort of into the lion's den to mm. to get a player. To, to let down um, but he did you know and I, I think that was the that was the way to do it because obviously you know Rafa for instance or some managers would would just p- pin up the team on the board and you'd be like what so you wouldn't get Not called it, you wouldn't get called in with Rafa that, that was a change when I think it's a bit there, old right? school that like I think uh, managers probably a little bit more loof now um, there are some managers that would do it like I think the right way, I think the right way is to tell, you know, if you're not playing tomorrow and Dave's taking your place, right, you've played the last five games and I go, look, uh, Chris, I need to see my office. You'd come in the office and I'd go, look, Chris, um, <clears throat> I'm going to go with Dave tomorrow and then explain my reasons, you know, like, you've only did three pancakes last week. Uh, Dave's been training really well and I think he deserves his chance. That's not to say that you won't play next week, but I just feel for this specific game, I'm going to go with Dave. But the thing is, manager doesn't have these conversations on the training ground, right? Generally speaking, they are in the office where you can be one-on-one. Yeah. You can't prove what was said in front of everyone else. So you, you can bullshit a bit more. Or you can... I think there's a huge amount of bullshit. Down, you know? But in the office, it's a different... Your interactions with the manager are naturally different, right? When you're one-on-one in their office than it is on the training ground. Yeah, but I think, I think there is a lot of probably bullshit that you have to say as a manager. I might hate you as a, a left-back, for instance. I might go, he's fucking useless. But we need him for this year because we can't get anyone else in. We've got no financial budget to buy players or the window's closed. So I might look at you and go, you're crap, but I need you for this year. So this so- is why I worry about you getting into management, you know? Because let's say you do this, right? Let's say you got into management and you've got to learn these quite subtle techniques of dealing with people. I mean, you, I feel totally demoralised right now. I'm a decent yeah, left back. That's why I wouldn't say that to you, would I? I wouldn't say it to you, that's what I'm saying. I would say. Well, let me say so, it to Dave. So, I feel like so, you're getting so, no, offended well, no, no, in this okay. hypothetical no, so game. Let's say, let's, say, let's say I'm performing you're the best I can. You're getting offended in the fact that no, I'm but telling I'm, you I'm shit. I'm performing to the best my, Whether I respect you or not is a different matter. But I've walked into your office, <laughs> right? I sit down with you. Yeah, um, but bear, now, but in your mind, head, I think you're shit. I'm the best left back the club's got, but you think I'm shit. I yeah. know you don't really like me, but I've come in. No, but you wouldn't know that. But I do. But why I, would you? Because I've picked up on a few things. <laughs> right? I've heard Fabrizio's <laughs> tweeting that they're You've interested in another left back. They've got no one in the window. All right. I'm coming into the office. You heard there's rumours about. Yeah, I'm the best left back this club has. Um, At this moment, I right. want to know what what my future is here. Otherwise, I'm potentially going to go. Chris, you are by far the best left back we have at this football club. Mm. Um, we weren't looking at left backs in the window because I had, my full trust was in you. I know you had a you didn't play great on the weekend, but that is by the by because we know you're much far better than that. You've been training well. Um, you're a good influence in the dressing room. Yeah, and we believe that we can get Champions League this year. With you, you at left back, you have absolutely nothing to. And we'll look about. at renewed terms in the summer. We'll, of course, we'll speak in the summer. Yeah, you see, I don't. <laughs> I'm reassured. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. But you shouldn't be, because my whole my whole mindset there was he's crap, and we'll get a new one in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have a situation where you were like, um, you know, David Brent in the office, where they hide a dildo under the the um, <laughs> the thing, like pranks on the manager in the office? Mm. Did that ever happen? Did anything ever happen where you would do something to the office? Or that's one particular t- particular uh, incident. Because um, it really feels like a no fly zone. That that's yeah, not, not not obviously not in the in the manager's office. That's serious ah. and that's one on one. But I'm talking about team meetings where there was a few animal noises that were that were raised. 
Um, what, club, what club? There's no point. There's no point getting into that now. But um, yeah, what animals, was, uh, Just anyone you could think of, really. So like, uh, and it's usually not the manager talking. You know what I mean? If someone's talking about set pieces, and you just you just hear. Mmm, <laughs> from the back. But he disguised them as coughs. You know, like. Oh, woof, woof. <laughs> Just a little thing like that. So I'll bear it in mind, if you're in a boring sort of work event and someone's giving a talk, the loudest animal noise um, that you can possibly do will, will usually win the day. Crouchy, so you've spoken to Chris, right? And you've basically sold him the dream. I come into the office and say, Crouchy, I play left back as well. I've got a big idea for the Christmas do. I want to go to Las Vegas. How are you dealing with that? As a manager? Yep. Oh, just you'd be fine two weeks wages for even bringing it up <laughs> Las Vegas for the Christmas do we've got like the busiest period coming up here um, you'd be lucky if you even get a night out and I'm a fan of a night out but like in hindsight now as uh, if, I, if I was a manager now it just doesn't it doesn't actually make any sense I know that it's tradition for everyone to have a Christmas do but we are the entertainment over Christmas, literally. Yeah. Like, so, like, it actually doesn't make any sense. And like, I, I, obviously, I don't want to kill the lads that are still playing now. Like, because I loved the Christmas do. It was great. We had the best fun ever. But actually, just have it in November mm. or do it in January. There's actually no point whatsoever. Like, you, you train Christmas Day. You play Boxing Day. You play the 28th. You play the first. You play the seventh or sixth. Um, so it's just. It doesn't make any sense to go have a night out in that period, which is totally against everything that I believe in, really. <laughs> because I love the Christmas do. I absolutely mm. love some of the best times of my life are Christ Christmas do's, but as a manager, it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Crouchy, which player would you send to represent the squad for the Christmas party into the manager's office to get the best result? Is it, is it team, does team captain go into the manager's office to best represent the Christmas Yeah, day? I mean, that's the worst part of being a team captain, I think. I think. Isn't that a mad bit of the role? That, like, mm, it's, it's a shit role. Considering that. it's all really about motivating the team. I don't the get it. I, I, I don't get being a captain. I'm not, like, it's never really appealed to me. I don't know what good comes out of it. So every captain you've had as part of your team... Apart from lifting a trophy. But every captain has to go in. It's like an... It probably is a kind of arranged thing. They have to walk in and discuss. Like, for me, the visions of, like, Stevie G walking into the manager's office to go and <laughs> negotiate the Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, mate, like, it happens. It's mad. It happens, yeah. And then they come back and report it. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like he's settled on... He's, he's settled on... He's settled on, you know, one night in <laughs> Dublin. <laughs> Is that how it actually is? Or? That's exactly right, yeah. You go in, well, obviously, like, and, then, and everyone's like that, like little little cats waiting for, for, for the, for the mum to come back. <laughs> Literally going, are, they, are we in? And like, it's a huge deal. I mean, of Christmas party, it, it, and like, you know. Stevie G comes back this month, two nights, Dublin. <laughs> We what? spoke to Casper Schmeichel about it, didn't we? And, and the best of the fancy dress ones, where you go out full fancy dress. It's hard to tell which players what. Well, the you best know, one was Stevie G when he when he was dressed as the oh, old man. That was genius. And he was in the mobility scooter. Genius. And there was like people taking pictures outside the thing, and they they just let it, it helped him in. Yeah, genius. I didn't even know that it was Stevie. What a captain! I wonder if that was decided with the manager. Like, imagine they were in the creative input into the into the outfits, into the outfits and everything. It didn't help me. I was dressed as a parrot. In terms of the, um, <laughs> in terms of the manager's office, when when's the time that you've gone in and you felt intimidated? And do they ever have that setup where it'd be like they'd have a desk where they go, "Come sit over here," yeah, and they'd yeah. have a little sofa. Oh yeah, <laughs> regularly, and it becomes a bit Lorraine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember my last one with Mark Hughes was on the on the couch there, but I, I, I was a bit more sort of like I, I had more respect then. You know what I mean? Like I played for England, and I think I was more of a sofa. Kind of, it was like come and sit on a sofa and like talk as almost not equals. Do you know what I mean? But like, let's you know, you've earned the sofa. Yeah, you know, let's converse. So it could be in front of the desk. Or yeah, but I think it's in front of the like, desk. With like when you, I don't know if you watch them sit down. You know, Mourinho and Deli Ali on yeah. the Amazon one. That was very much. I'm going to tell you what I think. It's I not think. long till we'll have fire pits like Love Island. You know, it'll be, yeah. go, let's go to the fire pit crowd. Well, the, way, the, the way the game's going, it's like, you know, everything's getting filmed, isn't it? It's like, you know, can I have a word? <laughs> I'll pull you for a chat. I'll pull you for a chat. 
would it not be Crouchy sat in the, the dining hall and very love island just, off. I've got a text P- Poonis has just pulled me for a chat every situation that I've had to go into the manager's office I've built up in my head to the point where and, and I think this is a good advice for anyone who thinks that they are oh, they can't go into the boss's office at work or they can't ask for a pay rise or they can't do this they can't do that I think you know, having been in that situation where I think football managers are probably nastier than a lot of bosses, I would say, just do it. I think, like, it actually, ne- it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. Was, was Harry's office the best? I, in my mind, it's the best. The thing is with Harry is, like, he can be cutting, really cutting. Like, we, obviously, with the, you know, this is a big joke that, you know, me and him are like, you know, father and son. Um, and, like, he signed me everywhere, but he also sold me at places. But he was brilliant with me, and I'm, he was such a huge influence on my career. Um, but it's still a difficult place to go if you've got something that he doesn't want to hear. Um, because I, he can rip people to, to shreds. So I, I, like He's so quick with you know, his comments and cutting he can be. I've seen him. If he doesn't like you, you know about it. And I do like that about him. But it's still a daunting office to go into. But I think if you're a manager, you need to make your office a daunting place to go so people don't come in there every day. You know, if, like, if you, you've got to drop 10, 15 players every week. It must in some ways be easier at a club level because you're seeing them every day and there's a process yeah. and there's a way about the building that you learn and everything. What about international level when you want to see the manager there? Did you ever do it? Or, yeah, I did. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke to, I spoke to a few managers, but, um, you know, there, there's actually more meetings with England because you you don't often see them. And they don't see you every day, so they want to ask you questions as well. Um, certainly, if they're going to start you, they want to know, you know, how you're feeling and what what you know you need and stuff like that do you curly but, finger Capello though um, I have curlied him yeah yeah there was a couple of times where I did I did curly him he's not he's not big on the on a, on a curly <laughs> from, from players would you have a glass of wine with Capello in the office or no 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 very much not he um, he's not he's not one for for one on ones like Rafa as well like he'd say my office is always open but it wasn't <laughs> You know, one of those where like, oh, you can always come in there and we're like, my, office, my door's always open. It's yeah. not. The moment you go in there, he's fuming. Yeah. He, 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 didn't, he didn't like it. If you're getting called in by the manager, he respects you. He wants, you know, if you, the, the fact that, you, you know, you get, you're getting totally pied off. If you're not asked into the manager's um, office to, you know, explain where you're going wrong or how you can get back in the team. It means he doesn't give a fuck, to yeah. be honest. Um, you know, the fact that if you're getting called in and like, you could do this, you could do that, at least he's, he, you know, he's given you a chance. It's quite, because it's all about respect in sport in a sense, is that you want the manager to respect you and tell you that you're not in the team instead of it being kind of on a board or yeah. this or that. I found that difficult under Rafa, that. You know, like just turning the board and going, not seeing your name on it. You know, like, I used to well document the Champions League final, like just turn the board and just, not been on it and like playing most of the Champions League like p- pretty much every game and you just say nothing at that point well, you must just you be do? like just like I'm not on it like do state. other guys nudge you or like do you look for other reactions well, it's or... just, just one of those things like, I mean what you can't you can't change it I, I, like you know the Champions League final is much bigger than one person isn't it so it's difficult to kick off as much as I wanted to throw tables around you know, I'm not that, uh, number one, I'm not that type of character anyway, but number two, it's, it's, it's bigger. It's bigger than me. It's about getting a result. But I think there's certain players that you you kind of want to bench, in a sense, in those games to get a reaction. I just don't think that's you. Yeah, just, um, I mean, obviously, the, like, the champs, like, the, the other thing was going away with England. Like, I remember going away with England, scoring three goals in two games and coming back, and Rafa sort of said to me that, um, don't get carried away, you know. I was like, "What?" He said, "Don't." Get... So he put me on the bench for like three games, and I'd be like, "I just, I just like, I don't get that mentality. Like, I'm not that type of person to get carried away with my own success, you know. Like, I wouldn't. That would never even cross my mind. I was just buzzing and like confident. I wonder so what thinking, he meant by that. Well, I think he was trying to put, trying to bring me back down to earth, and I was thinking actually. Like, I need to play. Like, I'm flying. I'm, I'm so confident and I'm ready to score. You know, like, I'm, I'm going to do well. I'm, like, I'm just full of confidence. 
I went from that period where I didn't have, I struggled like for confidence to then the opposite. Like, mm. I'd go into games just knowing I was scoring, like for England, for Liverpool. I was going to games just knowing. In the England get stuff was mad. I was like getting 15 minutes in the, the games. I knew I'd score. Like, I just knew. I was just that confident. And he sort of like just stopped it. And I was like, I just don't understand that mentality of like stopping someone in a rich vein of form. Or do you have hindsight on it? Do you think it was right no, no, what he was doing? Or? No, I don't think it was right decision at all. No, I think you got to know your characters. I think I think there are players that would would get carried away with all with it all, but that wasn't me. And I think if you know that was the problem. I think Rafa's. I love Rafa. I wouldn't have a bad word to say about him. I love him as a manager. Um, you know, gave me the opportunity to play for the best club in the world, and you know, I, I'll always thank him for that. And he's a he's a great person, but. Um, he wasn't very good with people, if you know what I mean. Like he was an amazing coach, and he was really mm. t- tactically, tactically aware, and, yeah. and he'd do things that would surprise you. And you know, he was methodical in everything he did. But um, dealing with you on a human level, he wasn't very good. It's interesting, isn't it? And if you watch the All or Nothing yeah, yeah. documentary, I, so when you see Deli Ali in that situation with Mourinho, is it? Is what we're looking at there with kind of how you That's could real, relate yeah. to those oh, experiences. Totally, yeah. totally. Because it's... I found the stuff with Deli Ali and Mourinho crazy to watch. For, you know, because we, we don't get that insight. That would happen regularly, that. Those comments were like, I don't want to see... You know, you are technically very, very good. You've hit these levels. Um, but you you jump in and out of form and you, you don't sustain that level. And obviously the top players that he's worked with say at Chelsea, for instance, like Drogba, Terry, Lampard, they don't peak and trough, do you know what I mean? They, they, they maintain a level, and that is what being at the top is. It's, it's you know, Gerrard's form didn't dip that much. I get, I get or, that. Or, you know, like the top players level just, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't go to take these mad dips. See, they might have a dip in four, but not to the, to the level where, where he had it. In that situation, like with Mourinho, it should be a sponge, right? And like, I look at it with like Ronaldo at Man United. Like, are those young players going over to him and being like, what do you do? Like, how do you do this? Like, how, what do you eat? What have you, like, are they, I I think any any player that I've been in that I've respected and looked up to, like, I've tried to emulate or I've taken little bits of what they do and looked at their training routine. I, I don't know if I don't know if they do in yeah. United. Yeah, that's, uh, do that, you know what I mean? well, that might be my perception of that actually, because Ronaldo for me stands more as a signing of as well as being a great player. It, you'd think it's the influence on the other players around be. and the opportunity to basically learn just like same way we sit in a pub and I learn a lot, you know. Imagine having, no offence, imagine having Ronaldo on the yeah, training yeah, ground yeah. every day. Just shadow him, just think, mm. like, ask him questions constantly. I don't I don't know if the, if that happens. I don't know how we got yeah. onto this, but... I, I, just, I think the interesting side with that is that Mourinho's dealing with Deli Alli a certain way. It's not worked Deli Alli. Ronaldo may do the same thing, where he is his way or the highway, you have to follow him and so forth. I think Ronaldo and Mourinho are quite similar in a sense. That's and and that might not work with all the young players. You look yeah. at... Jaden Sancho is a prime example of that, a player that went to Borussia Dortmund, that went to learn, that came back to continue their development. We've kind of changed in a sense, right? Like where old school in bracket managers have fallen out of the game because they're not these Jurgen Klopp, Guardiola, motivators, improvers that are going to like make you better, mm. improve you. as a. And, and it is interesting to think Jose was at the top of the game. He's still at the top of the game, but he has a certain way. It might not work with everyone. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I think I think it's more my case now with managers, uh, Ging people up and telling everyone how good they are, and it's a different way of handling people. That uh, and that's fine. I think people are different now, and people are more sensitive in everyday life, not yeah. just football. It's, yeah, is it time for the beanbag? 
We spoke bag. about the sofa. Is it time to get two bean bags in the manager's office and you sit down on the bean bag? I together? think that's where we are now, Dave. I think it's a bean bag situation. Harry um, Redknapp's not doing a bean bag. No, though, well, well, you know, Harry's not in the game anymore, is he? Up. That's, that's you know, Harry's not in the game yeah, anymore. You know, it wouldn't have been thing. a bean bag in that's Harry's what I mean. day. It's a symbol of you know, are we never going to see it? You know, that old... I think bean bags sum up where we are in society these days. I mean, I, I do think that it's a bean bag world. Mate, I've been I've been watching a bit of Maidenhead of late, you know, and Devonshire there. Flat cap. Man's never going to get on a beanbag. No, no. But, but, yeah, but you know, is he ever going to get in the Premier League? You know, it's a very, it's a very fair point. <laughs> like it or not, we're in a beanbag generation. <laughs> Crouch, have you ever been into the manager's office and you've said something and the manager's changed it tactically, personnel-wise? Towards the end at Stoke, I was in this sort of you know, influential group that was called into the manager's office to discuss what's going wrong or discuss what's going right. And I was in some of those, I was privy to some of those meetings, but I think there was a few things like discipline-wise at Stoke that I raised that were that were changed. And listen, you know, like I've, I've always been a sort of like happy-go-lucky kind of jovial person around the place, but some of the things that were going on at Stoke, I think we've discussed it before, mm. you know, flabbergasted me really. And... um disgusted me at times. Some of those things might have come into play. Yeah. But there but was actual change that happened. There was change, yeah. yeah. There was. It had, there had to be. And then did the other players know it was you that had gone into the office? Uh, and... Well, I, I was I was quite open with, with what, I, you know, I wasn't, wasn't behind anyone's back. I was quite open with, um, with what I thought. But it had to be. I don't know whether it was too late, if I'm honest. I should have, should have flanked, you know, flagged it far, far earlier. <laughs> It was, you know, because as you said, it was sort of in pre-season, some of the things that were happening. A lot was... of players listen to this. Would you encourage them to go to the manager's office a bit more? No, I don't think it's like, you know, no one wants to be parched, do they? But I think, <laughs> you know, like, if you've got something to say, and, and, then yeah, say it. But I, I would, that's a last resort for me, like the manager's office. I'd rather pull him sort of like casually on the training ground or whatever. But, you know, going to the manager's office is a serious matter. That it's tough, but I think every anyone in 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 any walk of life has tough discussions with. And if you don't, you know you don't care enough. Do you know what I mean? Like you need to have those discussions if you if you're passionate about your job. You know you you do have to have those discussions in in any walk of life. It's something that didn't come naturally to me that I had to force myself to do. It's tough, but you you feel so much better once you've done it. Must get emotional when you have to say goodbye to the manager for the final time. You're in their office. Uh, it never, it never, surely doesn't end up in a big argument and being kicked out of the. Now, do you know what? Then. Like my, my final ever time in a manager's office was in Sean Dyson's office at Burnley, mm. and um, we were just about to play Arsenal in what I knew in the back of my mind was my last ever game as a professional footballer, and um, he sort of knew it as well, and he sort of said, you know. Do you want to talk about a new contract, and um, or do you want to do something else? <laughs> and he knew that I wanted to retire. I think, and I said I didn't as much say it. I just said, look, we'll, we'll talk about we'll, we'll take the summer to decide, which is what I, what I always plan to do. I didn't want to go out to a big fanfare. I didn't want to do you know announce it or let's just sort of mm. get it done. And the only people that knew on that day. That I retired was was my family really. I said, look, I think I'm gonna, I think that's me. So I took all the kids on the pitch and got a great photo of us all on the pitch after. And then I spoke to Sean Dyche on the phone and said, Yeah, I'm gonna retire. I want you to be the first to know because he was the he was the manager at the time. But that, those discussions were great. But that last time in the office, it. you're you're talking about a, a period of time where he probably instinctively knew what you were doing, but allowing mm. you to do it without saying without it. having any influence on so it. So in, in the manager's office at that point, what was it? Like, did it? Was it both of you pretending a little bit? No, it was quite emotional not... because he knew and I knew, but we didn't say it. Yeah, and it was like a hug. Do you know what I mean? At the end, and it was like, which is not what ever happens. No, in of course office, not. You know, so... Dan would never do that. But yeah, did we... he? That's weird. I've, I can't imagine Sean Dyche doing a hug. It's like a bear hug. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what did he? Did he call you over or did you go? No, come no, in? no, no like... it was a couch scenario. <laughs> was it a couch? <laughs> Hugging yeah. on a couch is no, deceivingly no, no, hard. No, stood up, obviously, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, no, because that... 
Yeah, that, was, yeah. that would have been very strange, yeah. <laughs> Couch hug's weird, isn't it? It's it's hard to do that, actually. Yeah, especially if you're, mooning, no? if you're opposite each other, because yeah. you could fall into his lap or something. Yeah. No, no, that would be the worst thing of all, wouldn't it? If you end up oh, yeah, yeah. on Sean oh. Dyche's lap through <laughs> through a hug gone wrong. No, it was that, that, that was something. Yeah, like you know, he was very good around that time um, with me. I had a few issues as well, like and 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 the, you know, everyone around that club at Burnley was was were amazing with me. It's quite an amazing journey that you go from that young lad that had to go into the manager's office and basically talk about, you know, wanting to move your career and do this and difficult discussions to end up where it was and hugging Sean Dyche. Like, it's it's yeah, it's man. actually quite an amazing... Mm. Even in just the office, if yeah. you think about it, it's an amazing journey from that to the end. It is, yeah. Um, and, like, coming sort of full circle, not being able to go into a manager's office to then, like, sort of having the career that I had, really, and it ending... In a manager's office. Um, with a bit of a cuddle. I think that's great. With a nice, yeah. It was, you know, he was not letting me, um, he was not putting anything in my head. He was just saying, like, it's your decision, whatever. You've had a great career and, you know, you've, you've, you'd be well respected here. But, yeah, decided to to end it. And um, it not was a good Not many people get that, I don't think. No, I was lucky. I was so lucky. And, like, I'm so l l lucky now. But I, 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 my career, everything I did was just, a dream and like to have that was when people say you know do you want do you miss it I don't miss it because I, I, I had more than anyone could ever imagine well then Crouchy another week closer to Crouch Fest still don't think we've really sorted too much with it uh, you know it'll be good I, I know it's gonna be good I don't, also don't want to do this false like oh we're not we are all putting in hours away from this and calling in favours. It would just be nice when it's I've all on. I've to some good people this yeah. week. Really good. Yeah. About appearing. Yeah, same. I think what we need to do is regroup and just get it all down on one page. And like, I think there's a lot of ideas at the moment. But also, just trust us. We did it with the first Crouch Fest. It's Crouch Fest 2, this one. But trust us, the first one, no one really knew what we were up to until they turned up and it was worth it. It's going to be big. It's going to be big. Keep the ideas coming through on the website. If you want to get in touch or questions for Peter, go to thatpetercrouchpodcast.com. And of course, we're going to be back stronger next week. Chumbawamba. Chumbawamba. Chumbawamba.